Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are deep diving into a great motherboard for the core ultra series CPU, the Asus ROG Strix C890E gaming Wi-Fi. Whether you are a gamer or a content creator, this motherboard can be one of the best choices. Let's have a look. All right, first thing first, let's check what we have inside the box. Here we got the motherboard itself. We'll get in a minute to check all the details and the specs. Here we got some stickers, some manuals. If you are building for the first time on this motherboard or if you are building for the first time at all, this might be useful for having a view on where you can find all the connectors and everything else. And here we have the keyring and we have some screws for mounting all the SSDs. This motherboard has seven SSDs. We will talk about that later. And we'll have also some parts for the SSDs, strip ties, SATA cables and the Wi-Fi antenna. So that's all. Let's get to the specs of the motherboard. This motherboard supports Intel latest LGA 1851 socket and you can install only the new core ultra processors here as we can see here we have four dim slots supporting up to 256 gigs of ram and it goes up to 9000 megatransfer per second power delivery is handled by an 18 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 base vrm setup and this can be helpful if you want to overclock your cpu and it will do that without any issues cooling of the vrm is really impressive with these two heat sinks here and here it's it's also a pipe for dissipating all the heat so let's go and check uh, what we have regarding the connectors. On the left top here we have the two connectors for the CPU. Here we have the connector for the fan, CPU and AIO and here we have the RGB connector here, here and here we have the display for the errors here we have the start button and also the reset button here we have the power connector for the motherboard and here we have the USB 3.1 header here there is the USB type C header and here we have uh, this is angled at 90 degrees another USB type 3.2 types USB and here we have the SATA connectors going on the bottom of the motherboard here we have the front panel connector three USB 2.0 headers which might be useful if you want to connect those RGB apps or whatever other devices you have. The other four pin BWM headers, one and two here, and another one, one header here, and two ARGB header, the audio header. And here we have the PCI mode switch. You can switch this to auto or to 4.0 switch. This is going to change the layout of PCI slots. Checking the connectors here, we have one display port and one HDMI, and we have the clear CMOS button, the BIOS flashback button. Here we have three USB type A up to five gigs and seven type a USB up to 10 gigs and here we have four type C USB and the first two one are Thunderbolt and this USB here is useful for power delivery it can deliver up to 30 watts and this is a USB type C 10 gigs here we have the Wi-Fi 7 connectors these are really simple you can just plug in and you don't have to do nothing else here we have my key line out and the optical connector for the audio and here we got the seven NVMe slots so let me go in detail let me move all these covers and go in detail and to explain how the PCI bifurcation works here because if you install all the of the NVMEs, you're going to reduce the PCI lanes on PCI here. So the NVMe here is a PCI Gen 5 NVMe. So you can simply remove it as so the heatsink, it's a really big heatsink and have this also the heat pipe here as we can see for dissipating all the heat of the PCI Gen 5 NVMEs. And here, as we can see, we have the slider here in case, uh, depending on what kind of SSD you're installing here, you can use this slider, which is really easy. You, you can install your NVMe really in seconds. Okay. so here we have all the slots for the NVMe drives. One thing to keep in mind, which is important, these two sockets here, the M23 and the M24, share the PCI lanes with the PCI slot here. So whenever you install NVMe drives here, this will reduce the speed of this one instead of 16, but it, it will reduce it to eight lanes. So my suggestion is you can install an NVMe Gen 5 here, which is going to be maybe your main NVMe or whatever. And you can uh, install the NVMe's on these slots here. You have one, two, three, four slots as we can see here on these four slots these are pci gen 4 slots so whenever you install these slots here you don't have any issues uh, the speed of this one will be full of uh, pci gen 5 now if you install only one of the drives here it will reduce the speed of this pci slot here to 8 instead of 16 and the same thing also with this one if you want wish to install maybe some other devices here it will reduce again the speed here on eight lanes so my suggestion is if you don't need nothing to install here 
here just install your gpu here your main drive here and you can use all the four slots that are going to be available that are going to be free here and you can use it for games or data or whatever else one important thing is that whenever you install the, your nvmes just remember to peel off these plastics here otherwise you are not going also on the heatsink otherwise you're not going to dissipate properly your drives with that said let's go into the bios and check some settings and some features that these motherboards have all right guys here we are into the bios we can go and pick a couple of settings here the first thing that i wouldn't recommend is enabling the xmp profile in on your memory because that will cap a lot of performances if you don't do that so in my case for example i have done an xmp tweak it but you can do xmp1 or 2 or manual if you want i would suggest to go with xmp1 or xmp2 to check if your memory is working properly with this motherboard i've noticed that this motherboard is highly sensible when you are using four dims instead of two generally speaking when you use four dims you are going in that kind of particular territory of tweaking your memory and hopefully gaining the max performances from your memory but in this case this motherboard is really really sensible on four dims so i have been trying four kits for uh, with four dims and then i didn't manage to get the xmp profile on those memories probably the memory wasn't good a couple of them were on the compatibility list but anyway it didn't work we can scroll down and change other settings for example you can go here and change move all the limits from the cpu if you want to overclock and if you want to get the most of your CPU. But overclocking the new Intel Core Ultra CPUs will be topic for another video. So if you guys want to see that video, subscribe, hit the like button and enable notifications so you guys can check also that video too. And if you scroll down, we have all the stuff related to efficiency core to performances cores. We can change the DRAM timing control. We can do a lot of stuff here. You can go also in advanced and change um, a ton of stuff here. PCI subsystems, resizable bar should be enabled by default. But, but anyway, go and check this and you can change other settings and also monitor the temperatures you can check the fan speeds you can change the fan the q fan configuration on whatever it's it fits best for your needs one thing i would suggest you guys if you go here to the monitor uh, q fan configuration and if you set this one to cpu package is somehow the sensors when you are using those kind of those tools of monitoring cpu temps and so on this will be a little bit more precise on monitoring all the temps on your cpu all right here we are at the end of this video let's break down some pros and cons as a pro i would say a really amazing power delivery for overclocking without any issue it has an extensive storage options with 7 m.2 slots it comes with a great connectivity wi-fi 7 under port 4 and a lot of usb ports USB type c type a whatever and you have a really amazing bios you can customize every setting as a cons well the first thing is the price this motherboard costs around 500 to 600 usd and that is a lot for a motherboard considering the price this motherboard motherboard doesn't have a 10 gig LAN port which you should expect on a motherboard with that price tag and also the PCI lane for bifurcation is weird and not always explained clearly in the manuals the Asus ROG Strix Z790E gaming Wi-Fi is an amazing motherboard it's for enthusiasts who want the best and has a lot of features it comes with a lot of performance connectivity aesthetic and whatever but comes also with a premium price thanks for watching if you find this review helpful give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this if you have any questions or if you want to share your experience with this motherboard drop a comment below see you on the next one